Hello, once again, you are most welcome to the Viral Knowledge Channel by Veronica Rose. You are most welcome. And uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, I'll keep reminding you again, subscribe now, just now, right now. And uh, if you've already subscribed, thank you. Feel free to like this video and share it out as well. So today I would like to speak about what happens next after you've passed your CISA exam. CISA stands for Certified Information Systems Auditor. And um, it's a globally recognized certification focusing on audit, controls, information security, information systems, privacy, um, risk management, IT governance, and uh, uh, security in general. So preparing for a CISA certification, it is um, a job on its own. Whoever has done the CISA certification, I don't think that was an easy road. It requires preparation, it requires um, dedication, requires um, planning for you to be able to pass the CISA exam. And uh, everyone feels, feels so nice, you know, after writing that CISA exam and the screen displays, in case you did the remote proctoring, um, screen displays that you have passed the exam. Wow, it's usually very good because, you know, um, there is a thin line between passing that exam and failing it. But yes, you pass this CISA exam or you it's your second time to redo it. Fine, you've passed the exam. Then what happens next? So let's get started. So in order for you to secure the CISA certification and uh, to certify that um, you're a CISA or you're eligible to be CISA certified, when you pass your CISA exam, you have to apply for certification. So remember, passing the CISA exam doesn't automatically define you as a CISA. Like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, um, when you pass the exam, you're, a, you're apparently you're a, a CISA exam passer, but you don't have the CISA designation. You only um, add the CISA designation after your name when you've met all the requirements of being a CISA. I hope we are together. I'm not complicating all this thing. But once you pass the exam, you're a CISA exam passer. Then when you apply for certification and then you get certified, that is when you become a CISA. I hope we are together now. So um, I have written blogs actually about how I prepared and passed my CISA exam. Uh, so when you, pass, when you apply for certification, you need to meet the requirements, the relevant uh, full-time work, work um, experience for you to become CISA certified. And uh, those requirements are usually based on the CISA job practice areas. If you meet the requirements, you'll definitely uh, get certified. So uh, you'll submit your application to ISACA. And uh, after a few days, you'll, see, you'll receive an email uh, confirming if you're now a CISA or you're not eligible. And if you're not eligible, they'll guide you on the years of experience that you need to get in the CISA job practice areas for you to be able to qualify. And your certification will display on your, on your My ISAC account or it will be, if you needed a hard copy, it will be sent to you uh, on your address. So the requirements that are needed uh, for you to be certified, to become CISA certified, um, first of all, uh, you need five years um, of uh, professional experience in information systems auditing, controls, and uh, security. Um, there are also waivers available. So you may not have the five years experience in that area, but you have, you have five years experience in the job practice areas. I hope we are still together. So... Uh, an example, if you're a candidate within three years of experience, you can obtain a CISA certification in these ways. You'll have a waiver of uh, a maximum of one year experience in information systems 
and uh, one year experience in non information systems auditing, but you're still in the IT domains. Okay. Uh, the other waiver can come into uh, 60 to 120 university semester credit hours. So let's say you have a degree and you met the credit hours needed. So that will waive your two years, sorry, one year of experience, okay? The other scenario for the waiver would be if you have a master's degree in information systems or IT from a recognized university, that can also substitute one year of experience, okay? Um, the other thing is um, a candidate with, with like two years of experience as uh, a university instructor. Let's say you're a full-time instructor, you're training uh, students in computer science domains, IT domains, information systems domain. One year of experience can be waived for you. And then for the three years span, for the three years to be waived, um, let's say you have three years in IS auditing, uh, control and uh, security experience. You have two years in IS audit and control, and also you have one year experience, uh, maybe as an, an as a as a, an an instructor or a student. That those may be waivers for you to at least only need two years to be certified. Okay. Uh, you can find also this information on the ISACA website uh, for you to get more uh, familiar with uh, what I'm talking about. Then, um, so obtaining the, the CISA certification is not uh, is not just a one last step, okay? So once you've met all these criteria, you've even been lucky to get the waivers to earn the certification and the, uh, the five years experience uh, and the waiver adds up to that, Okay, earning the CISA certification, that is not the last step. You will need to maintain that CISA certification for it not to be um, revoked. I've uh, shared a video before on how to maintain your CISA certification to avoid it being uh, revoked. You can look into my other videos to learn how you can earn CPE hours. Okay, so... For you to maintain your CISA certification, um, just to remind you from the previous video, you need to adhere to the Code of Professional Ethics for CISA holders. Uh, you'll find the uh, Code of Professional Ethics guiding your conduct on the ISACA website. Uh, adherence to the, to the CPE program, whereby CISA holders must adhere to the CPE program. Uh, you have to maintain individual competence by updating your knowledge and skills in the areas of ICIS auditing, uh, security auditing, uh, security controls, um, assurance. You'll also need to provide a means of differentiating between um, qualified CISAs and non-qualified CISAs. Uh, you'll also provide a mechanism to monitor IS audit controls, maintain your competence in the profession, You'll, you'll uh, remember IT auditors are trusted advisors in the organization. So you'll have to ensure that you help top management develop sound, you know, IS audit knowledge, you know, a selection of personnel. Um, so when it comes to also maintaining your CPE hours, you need 20 CPE hours annually to report them annually for you to maintain your certification and uh, 120 CPE hours in a span of three years. So you can watch my other videos to see how you can earn that. Uh, but those are some of the requirements for you to enable you uh, maintain your CISA certification. Uh, so let me conclude on this and say, uh, once you have successfully become a CISA, okay, uh, your value to employers increases, okay? The CISA certification demonstrates that you, that, um, You've gained knowledge, and uh, you you'll keep uh, uh, seeking more knowledge out there. Uh, CISAs have a competitive edge over their peers in the industry. If you've noted most jobs for IS auditors or security professionals, you'll see 
uh, in the job description, they'll require you to have earned a CISA certification because it is a globally recognized certification in the global market, okay? So if you haven't yet uh, done your CISA certification, please go um, prepare for that certification, learn and uh, prepare for the exam, write your exam, apply for certification, and the rest should be history. So I wish you the best. When you earn your CISA certification, it doesn't end there. You have to maintain it. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one. If you haven't yet subscribed, please, please, please remember, subscribe to this channel so that we ensure that knowledge goes viral. Thank you for watching.